I read the name of this movie as Little Man, which you can be can be read a number of ways. These are they're little men like Greg Kinnear's character, and they're these little men like Theo and Michael. When you're looking for the combination that you're going to get from your actors, you talked about the emotional intelligence. What was it that you wanted to see on screen with their performance in terms of how they were going to be cast and how they were going to act on film? Um, one thing that was very clear to me early in the process is I remembered a film that I had seen that was pretty inspiring uh, in terms of this movie, which was The World of Henry Orient by George Roy Hill. And it's about two girls in, in uh, Manhattan who are kind of from different sides of the, of the uh, of the economic class, and they fall in love with Peter Sellers. And and one of the things that I um, noticed about that film, and in many films about childhood, is what's most important is that the kids be memorable, that something about the kid needs to stick with you um, when you're done. Um, as soon as I cast Thea, we had started doing some open calls in New York, and we'd put up signs at the Lee Strasberg uh, Institute on 15th Street in Manhattan, and a kid, Michael Barbieri, who uh, uh, saw the the number, pulled it off, and came into an open call. And as soon as I saw Michael, who was so from the city of New York, uh, he was very much, uh, he couldn't be from anywhere else, to be <laughs> honest. Um, I had a sense that they would be a good match. There was this feeling, and this continued as I shot the movie, that they were very, very different in styles. Um, they were both very authentic, but I thought of Theo is out of a Robert Bresson film. I just wanted to keep him very still and things would kind of emerge from him. And Michael was straight out of Scorsese. And um, <laughs> I thought I needed to let him go. And in certain scenes, I needed to let him sort of take on um, his own, where he, where he wanted to take the scene and be more improvisational. I will just share one thing with this audience, which is over the summer, uh, Michael Barbieri was accepted to the LaGuardia High School of Performing Arts. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's art imitating life or art imitating art, but I want to ask you about a scene that I think is so emblematic of the way in which you work and the way in which you tell stories, and that is the acting class scene. Was that always written that way, or was it written after you met your actors? How did that scene come together, and why is it so critical to the to the film? Because it's what a two minute shot, two minute sequence. It's actually a minute and a half. Okay, it's a long, but it's a good it's a yeah. good chunk of the movie. Yeah. Can you talk about that sequence? Sure. Um, one of the things that I try to do when I'm, I, I work with Mauricio um, Zacharias. This is our third film we've written together. We wrote a film called Keep the Lights On and then Love is Strange two years ago and now Little Men. And um, we, I would say 92% of the film is really precisely scripted. Um, I, I'm always looking for a kind of cinematic economy not in terms of financial economy, but aesthetic economy and trying to be as, as useful with each image and each word as possible. So I, I, I don't really encourage a lot of improvisation, but I find that if about 8% of the film is, is improvisational, is really about the characters within a particular world, it seeps into the other scenes and you begin to really believe in this, um, this universe that is the fictional universe that I've created. And one of the ways I go about that is by building those worlds very de with a lot of detail. So that acting class, A, that's Michael's acting teacher, um, a man named Mauricio Bustamante, and, and they'd been working together since Michael was nine. The kids in that scene, which all really add so much, all the faces of these young would-be actors, children actors, are all from the neighborhood in Brooklyn where, where the film is set in Bay Ridge. They're all kids who go to a place called Acting Out, the best acting school for kids in Brooklyn. And you know, though they have the hope and they have the, des the kind of creativity of that environment. And then we had some, some pieces of script. That's actually a Meisner exercise. It's a repetition exercise. And I will say that that's a Strasbourg school that we <laughs> shot it in. So there's a lot of tension with the different styles. <laughs> but they were willing and able to do that. And what I like about that scene and often it's a centerpiece kind of scene in a movie which which breaks the fourth wall just a little bit um, i think of it as also it's like carol burnett when carol burnett lets down her guard the audience feels really invited in and there's a pleasure to that so when ira directs he doesn't like to have a lot of time for rehearsal so if you're not going to have rehearsal with your filmmaker what are the kinds of questions that you want to ask ira that might help you understand the character, what are the conversations that you're having about the character that you're playing, the questions that 
the script might raise in your mind? Mm -hmm. Well, um, b before shooting started, uh, me and Ira, you know, met up uh, and we, we talked about the, uh, the script and we went through it. Uh, if there was any questions I had about why do this or why do that, uh, who the character really was, who this kind of more uh, not as talkative um, artistic person who, who he really is and what, what are the similarities between me and him, one of which is I'm not very talkative. Um, I'm not a very outward, external person, as maybe Michael is. Um, but uh, also, uh, the similarity between me and Jake is that we are both able to express ourselves through a creative medium, uh, his medium being art and my medium being through my acting and my filmmaking. Um, and, and though, as you bring up, uh, Ira doesn't believe in rehearsals, what he does do is that he sends uh, the cast on these little dates where um, me and Michael Barbieri uh, met together at Prospect Park. We skated around for a bit. We talked about music, movies we liked, uh, how we were doing academically, what were our favorite subjects, um, and just got to really know each other as people. And so we were really able to connect with each other as real people, not just as two people going into uh, a scene and we have no idea who, each, you know, who we are. So we were really able to get underneath you know, both of our skins. And because of that, I feel like the connection which is in the film is a really lively, real film, because it is. Theo, this movie is about a lot of things. One of the things it's about is about finding your way in a new location. Uh, in a new neighborhood. You're a Los Angeles kid. You go shoot this movie. How much did being the kind of fish out of water as an actor affect your performance in terms of being in this new environment and what that presented you? Um, well, well, um, what me and my, uh, my mom, you know, came out into uh, Brooklyn. We were right next to Prospect Park. And so we really did, you know, for two months, lived in this area and became, you know, I think very, very embedded in it. So maybe at first uh, I was, you know, kind of getting into, you know, what what the kind of situation was and where we were and how, how I could feel comfortable in it because I had not been to uh, New York too many times. Um, but I, th I feel like as the filming process went on, it, it felt a lot more like a like home in a, in a sense. So suddenly everything I saw wasn't so strange to me. Like, what is this thing called a subway? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I feel like, you know, at first, maybe it was a good thing that I was more out, out fish out of water, as you say, right. because this is a kid moving into a new neighborhood. And that was one of the first few scenes that we shot, but I, I do feel like as the filming process went along and as we stayed longer in Brooklyn, I was, I, I felt like I was a Brooklyn kid. Ira, was there a starting point for this story? I mean, I think a lot of people who know your work would say it kind of follows almost thematically to Love is Strange, but were you thinking about gentrification? Were you thinking about becoming a parent? What was the genesis of the idea? And does the idea then start finding a location and a story? Um, as, as you say, I have two kids, two, uh, four-year-old twins, and um, and so I'm a I'm a I'm a parent. I'm also a son, and I think it's, and I'm 50, so I'm sort of in some very middle point, and and I'm often thinking about my role as both um, uh, a new generation of parent, and also what my responsibilities and what I've learned from in terms of my own father and that relationship. I'm interested in these generational crosses, and I think this film is really, it's about these two kids, but it's also deeply about the parents' generation as well, and the marriage, and, and, and being a mother, and all these different things. So um, I, I wanted to make a film that focused on childhood in its relationship to adult life. And I also wanted to make a kind of film that I really miss, which is a sort of cinematic, film that has childhood maybe at its center, but that is not um, animated and that's not a superhero film. And that it's a kind of film like The World of Henry Orient or, or like a movie like Kess by Ken Loach or The 400 Blows or The Red Balloon. All these movies that introduced for me as a young person some of the beauties of movie making. And, and I, I wanted to try to capture 
that innocence. From your very first movie, The Delta, which is largely autobiographical, a lot of your own life is reflected in your movies, but you also work with a co-writer. Yeah. So how do you balance what you feel and what you understand with somebody who may not feel or understand or share those experiences? Um, you know, it's like it's it's a collaboration and a relationship, and 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 when it works, it can be very beautiful. Mauricio Zacharias um, is from he's he lives. We've both lived in New York for about twenty years. Um, he's from Rio. We tend to bring in bits and pieces of our lives. We're also now a form of family. He's the godfather of my <laughs> son. You know, we are a communal family in a way. When we started working on this film, we had the idea of a film about two boys who go on strike, which we kind of took from, from a Ozu film called I Was Born But, which is a silent movie made in the 30s about kids who go on strike, and I liked that as a premise. And um, and then we were like, well, what are our kids going to go on strike about? And and Mauricio brought, uh, he was telling me his family owned a store in Rio, and they were trying to evict a woman who had stopped paying rent, who was the shop owner. Uh, and it took several years to do so. And he kept telling me different chapters of, of what was happening down with his parents. And one day he came in and he said they were in court at the time uh, with a in front of a judge. And, and on the very day they were in court, they went to the store and the woman had put a help wanted sign in the window. And it was to me so strikingly dramatic. And also I was aware immediately that there were two, t two sides of that story. There was Mauricio's family side and there was the woman who was trying to hold on. And, and that gave us a, a really kind of the, the larger texture of the film. What we tried to do was, was play that out in a way that the audience isn't allowed to choose easily who they identify with. There's a kind of... Um, the rich are not too rich, the poor are not too poor. They're, they're in a way, it's a, it's a fight for the middle class. And is that part of what you like in your movies, that you don't want to have answers, that if people can debate what the movie means and debate who they're supposed to like or dislike, that you have succeeded? Well, I, must, I feel that I construct things more than that. I'm not. I'm, I mean, I'm certainly somewhat of an observational filmmaker, but I'm also interested in dramatic suspense, and I think that ambiguity of moral center gives that suspense. So the audience is um, is is really trying to, to to ask themselves where do they position, what position are they in in the story, and and what I find with this film is it begins, and maybe many of my films do, they begin in a very open way, and slowly the doors start shutting. And it becomes a real chamber piece between these five characters who are caught in something that is really um, hard to fix. Theo and Ira, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for coming out for the film as well.